I've never tried stretching a fence by myself before, so we'll just have to see how this goes. This is kind of a crazy idea. I've never heard of anybody doing it this way before. Hopefully it'll help me get the fence upright and in the right position. I've pre-placed some large plywood pieces along the fence. Those pieces are just the disassembled parts of my old workbench. I intend to use them to help me build new workbenches if I ever get a, an actual shop space to work in again. Anyway, the idea will be to roll the fence out right over those plywood pieces and then use the plywood to lift the fence up and hold it temporarily against the posts so I can get the, the stretcher on there and pull it tight and put the staples in. But first, I'm set up here. Got my first roll in place to hopefully just roll down the hill nice and easy. I'm cutting out little pieces of the wire that goes vertical. I'll go back several lengths, so I'll be left with just the horizontal strands. Those will wrap around the fence and then tie back to themselves. Came rolling back down the hill. Okay, these uh, plywood pieces are not working quite as well as I'd hoped. It's not real flat against the fence, but they might be working enough for me to at least get the corner in place. And then we'll go from there.
that plywood was probably helpful to stand up the fence and let me get the first corner wrapped and twisted around. But those plywood pieces really kind of got in my way after that, so I just had to had to lay them down. In order to pull enough of the slack out of the fence to begin with, I progressively put zip ties coming down the line temporarily just to stand it up and pull it a little bit tighter. I've got the fence puller hooked up here with a couple of cable pulls to our end post. I'm going to go ahead and pull this thing pretty tight. We don't want it tight as a drum, just nice and tight. Then I will cut it off the spool there and cut back more links and wrap it and twist it there, slowly making progress. I did have a really close call here. This cable pull thing here was right up there originally. And Clyde, yes, Clyde. Clyde was super interested in it, tried to get at it, got his head through here and slipped. He was choking to death. It was very serious. So I had to jump the fence and manhandle him up and out of there. <sighs> not something you want to see, not something you want to have happen, but he's fine. Let's keep going. Just for, uh, just for myself, I want to make a note. This fence pull is about six feet away from the post. So as I do the other ones, I'll probably target right about there so I can have the maximum amount of ratcheting to uh, tighten it up. You don't want to run out of cable and have it still not be tight enough. Here you can see one of my mistakes. The cables on that top cable puller are crossed. That makes tensioning it a little bit harder and it makes releasing the tension later a lot harder. I was more careful about that on the other fence lines. Okay, the fence is nice and tight. I've cut off the spool. I have cut back all of those vertical wires so we've got the horizontal wires ready to wrap around. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap a few of the middle wires and then I'll take these guys off and we'll start stapling. So we've got this corner secured now. Unfortunately, these wires weren't quite long enough because of the way the fence got stretched. But I stapled them down there, so I think that'll be all right. You certainly don't have to watch me pound in all the staples or the T-post clips that I'm gonna need to do. I'm gonna hit the top, the bottom, and about every other wire up on these wood posts.
stretching a fence by yourself, these little zip ties really come in handy. So this is the first corner where I'm wrapping a corner that's already been wrapped. It's a little more complicated because you have to fish all these horizontal wires between all the other ones. It can be a tangled mess in there with that diagonal twitch wire and all of those horizontal fence wires.
I'm placing these zip ties strategically so there's room for the fence to stretch more this way when I pull it tight with those uh, cable pullers. hung up a couple of buckets for our goats. This will be where we're going to move their feeder to. The first goat I'm going to release out into our newly finished enclosure is our newest goat, Finnick. We've been keeping him separate from the other bucks until I could finish this area. That way they can get used to each other with a little bit more room to spread out. It'll be nice for them to have some room to get to know each other rather than be really confined together in a really tight space and have to figure out the pecking order at that point. Yeah. Come on Fennec, you're gonna have all the room in the world. I've got some other goats to introduce you to. Come on, Finnick. Plenty of bushes to eat in here. Oh, it's okay, Finnick. Come on, this way. Yeah, look at this, Finnick. New goats. Yeah, new goats in there. Clyde, and Striker, and Blue. Okay. You are free to do what you want, Finnick.
can headbutt them later. We've had a little bit of rain out here. Hopefully that's the last of it for today. I'm gonna release those other goats a little bit later in the day. We'll give Finnick a chance to say hello through the gate, maybe explore a little bit on his own. I've got a feeling he's not gonna be the dominant goat. So we'll give him a chance to get used to things out there without the other goats. I hope those goats appreciate it. This new enclosure has been the biggest project I've done out here so far. Thanks for watching. Remember, your dreams are closer than the moon. Thanks for taking this trip around the moon with us.